Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we were looking into some recently deceased scientists. It seems they were all working on a classified project on a coos, and four out of the five of them have been killed. The last one should be here somewhere. Now we have just fought a whole bunch of mercenaries, which, uh, you know, didn't, didn't seem all that great. Oh, we got another dead guy. Fabulous. Okay. Hello? Stay back. I've got no grief with you. All I want is this bastard. Please! He's a madman! Mr. Toombs, you're insane! You need help! Shut up! You don't get to lie! You don't... Shepard? My god, Shepard, is that you? Shit! Okay, given the fact that they know each other, and but you died this This is a member of her unit shit Oh I I don't know how Naomi would be feeling in this situation I I don't think she'd believe her eyes I think she'd be thinking oh shit am I getting Am I getting stress-induced flashbacks? Like... Am I seeing the faces of my, my fallen comrades again? Like, I can I trust what I'm seeing? Corporal Tombs? But... But I saw you die on a coos. How did you get here? They took me, Shepard. The scientists. You can't prove any of this. This man is delusional. See, they were running tests on the Thresher Maws. They let those things hit us just to watch and study. I woke up in a holding cell. The scientists were delighted I'd survived. Now they had someone to run tests on. Oh. Oh, I... Here's the thing, what that guy said, you can't prove any of this! If it wasn't true, you'd say, I don't know what he's talking about. I didn't do that. I don't, like, you, you'd you say, like, I don't know. Instead, you can't prove any of this. So that, that's basically a, yeah, we did do it, but you can't prove it. Here's the thing, I don't... I don't think that Naomi is the type of person to cry, you know, while she's on a mission, but once she gets back to the Normandy and gets into her private quarters, you bet she is bawling her eyes out. You bet she is gonna have an emotional moment. Hell, I, I think she want to go speak to Charkwas, just like, hey, can, can we organize some therapy for me, please? <laughs> Everything I thought turned out not to be quite right. Um, if, if she had known, if she had known, she would have, tr wait a minute, hold, hold, hold up, no, 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 the Alliance Scientists. Alliance scientists, that's what we were told when we first began this mission. Alliance scientists undergoing a classified project. I'm going to continue my original thought. If she had known that he had survived, she would have done her damnedest to get to him. I think she I think she's feeling quite emotional. She's not showing it, but I think she's 
you know, she's feeling quite upset, like, oh shit, if only I'd have realised, if only I'd have realised he wasn't dead, if you can hear my stomach rumbling, I do apologise, I'm real hungry, I'm so hungry. Tombs, I didn't see anybody. If I'd seen you, I would have come back for you, I swear. You can't believe Tombs, he doesn't have any proof, I demand a fair trial. Commander Shepard was there, she knows the truth. They're part of some organization, Cerberus, that runs secret tests like this. They treated me like a lab animal. This man deserves to die, Shepard. For you, for me, for everyone else in the unit. Are you with me? Oh. I, I think Naomi would be feeling so many emotions right now. Because we've heard the name Cerberus before. They were behind a very similar attack on Admiral Kahoku's men. They're still fucking doing this. They're still fucking doing this. I, oh my lord. But here's here's what I'm here's what I think hurts the most. If I'm understanding this correctly, at the time they were alliance scientists, so presumably the alliance gave them the go ahead to do this Threshamore experiment on a coos, and the alliance gave her unit the go ahead to see what happened to that missing and um, that missing pioneer team or whatever they were. The Alliance set her up. I... After this, learning this... A couple of episodes ago, I said that I could see a situation happening where you have to decide between the council and the alliance like the the alliance want to go do their own thing and the council are saying no don't do it um after hearing this i don't think naomi would side with the alliance you purposefully used my unit as a sacrificial lamb i've suffered tremendously and presumably the only reason why I didn't become a lab rat is because I managed to get to the, um, the extraction point in time and there were people there or, you know, this, this other unit arrived and I, I think she's realizing if I had, if I had been knocked out, I would have been like tombs. I would have been a lab rat and the Alliance okayed that. The Alliance okayed what these scientists were doing. Fuck the Alliance. Fuck the Council. Fuck the Alliance. I... Yeah, I, I think Naomi, after learning this, she's like, right, the, the Alliance, I'm hostile to them. I'm hostile to them. Fuck them. They used me as a... They used my unit as guinea pigs tombs this poor guy was a lab rat now here's here's the question we we can we can let this guy shoot him we can try and persuade him not to we can we can say this isn't justice and the guy's demanding a fair trial With Dr. Saleon, Naomi said, hey, we need to arrest this guy. We need to arrest him. We need to bring him into CSEC. And here's the thing with Tombs. If Tombs is willing to testify against him, and maybe Shepard could back him up, you know, Naomi could speak to his character, say he was a good soldier, he was a good 
Um, I don't know if they were, they were Marines or what, but he, he was a good soldier. He, he wasn't one for making up stories. If he says that these, these um, scientists captured him and tortured him, then that's what happened. Then maybe, maybe we could get justice. However, however, a character flaw I like in my characters is hypocrisy i do like that as a character flaw and now here's the thing with with dr salion yeah he did bad shit you know we, we heard that he we saw that he was using people as test tubes this that and the other however it didn't really affect naomi personally this does this absolutely affects her personally so would she be willing to say let's let's um arrest him or would she say no absolutely not for all i've suffered for all i've suffered i'm putting a bullet in this man's head and right now i think she's seeing red right now she is thinking that the alliance the organization i have devoted myself to fucked me over they have continuously fucked me over i was treated like vermin when I signed up, I went through a coup, a coups, at which point everyone wanted to pretend that they hadn't treated me badly. And now I've learned that they organized a coups. They were behind all of this. So were they treating me so nicely because, you know, they had a guilty conscience? Like, oh shit, we had a survivor. We didn't expect anyone to survive. And we can't make her a guinea pig because other people, other teams have gotten involved so we're just gonna we're gonna make her the golden girl now i I, no for all she has suffered for all of the nightmares for all of the therapy the medication she had to go on to stop seeing the faces of her men and the women that served under her every time she you know, saw a crowd of people, she'd see those dead, those dead men and women amongst the crowd. She'd look through a window and see their faces in the reflection. Hell no. Hell no. Corporal, if you kill him, you're a criminal. But I'm a specter. Nobody will question me. You can't kill me. You don't know who you're dealing with. Damn it, Shepard, this is my kill. You got out with a few scratches and a scary reputation. I'm the one they tortured. Yeah, but... If, again, if you kill him, you will be punished for it. And I'm the one they can't prosecute, Tombs. You don't get to throw your life away so easily. It's... Really over? Maybe the screaming will stop now. I don't know. I think she's thinking this. She's never forgotten what happened on Akuz. It haunts her till it haunts her to this day. But this man is fragile and I, I think Naomi would feel like she failed him. She didn't realize he was still alive. She didn't go back for him. And as such, he ended up being used as a lab rat. So whilst, whilst she believes that the screaming doesn't stop, she's going to tell him that it's over. Those bastards can't hurt you anymore. Joker, tell the Fifth Fleet we need a ship for pickup. Aye, aye, Commander. Toom stares at the scientist's corpse, his hands balled into fists. Slowly, with visible effort, he opens his hands and exhales. You catch his eye and gesture towards the door. He won't be left behind again. Exit the bo- Oh, I- I like that. I like that line. Okay, can we- Here's the th th I'm like, was this stuff to loot? What- Ashley, are you okay? Whatever. Um, yeah, I, I need to know if there was stuff to loot in there, though. Um... 
yeah, with with Dr. Saley on that, that wasn't a quest that affected her personally. This did. This absolutely did. And in cases like that, I, I don't think she could have bared to let him go. I'm sure if Garrus had been here, he probably would have said something like, hold up, you, you, you made me, you know, go through the motions of arresting Dr. Saleon. Like, why? Is, isn't that hypocritical? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is hypocritical. But like I said, that's a character flaw I enjoy. Yeah, I want, I want to see what, what if anything is in here? Okay, nothing apparently. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. I mean, I think Naomi's thinking would be even if we did bring him to trial, what is the likelihood of anything being done? Because out of the five scientists who were doing this research, four of them are dead, so there's only one of them left. He's claiming ignorance. And if he got the Alliance's okay to do this, then surely they're going to be working hard to cover it up. Surely they're going yes, to... Okay. Surely they're going to be making sure that he has the best legal defense team he can have. Yeah, no, I... I don't think that Naomi regrets that for a second, and uh, I think, going forward, she is going to be a lot more hostile towards the Alliance. Unless they are able to prove, hey, he was actually working independently. Yes, he was on our payroll, but we did not okay what he was doing. He was working independently on his own thing. Unless, unless that is proven to her, I think she is going to be a lot more hostile towards the Alliance going forwards. Now then, where... Where, oh where, is this debris? I think, yeah, I, I think we can get round this way. Oh, that, that was an interesting quest. That was a really interesting quest, I like that. I went over here and I went diagonal, so I I think if there was another another survey spot on this planet, I would have found it. I'm pretty sure I would have found it, so you know what? I, I think I'm happy to return to the Normandy. No, no that's... It's F. It's F. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I I presume that Tombs is Message coming in. Patching it through. I reviewed your report on the situation, Commander. It's unfortunate Dr. Wayne ended up dead, but based on your report, your actions were understandable. Corporal Tombs seems to have found some closure. Hopefully with therapy, he'll have a normal life again someday. I hope this helped you find some peace, Commander. Thank you. Fit fleet out. Uh, if by find peace you mean made her hate the Alliance with a burning vengeance, then yes, it has helped her achieve peace. I mean, I guess it is possible that the Alliance didn't know what was happening. But still, I, 
until we can confirm one way or the other, I, I, I don't think that Naomi would be all that friendly towards the Alliance going forward. Okay, yeah, I I don't believe there was anything kind of hidden about. Let's let's have a read of these. Zion. Zion is a hydrogen helium gas giant even larger than Jupiter. Despite its deep gravity well and lethal radiation, it supports a small helium-3 mining industry. The reason is simple. As the only gas giant in the Utopia system, it is the only local source of fuel for Eden Prime's power stations and spaceports. Zion has 112 satellites, ranging from captured astero asteroids, excuse me. Again, I, I've been doing a lot of recording recently and my throat is like, please, please give me a break. Please, I need it. To which I say, no, you shall have no break. You can have plenty of water though. That is nice. Okie doke, where was I? Zion has 112 satellites, ranging from captured asteroids to the moon of Asphodel, which is large enough to retain a thick atmosphere. Population 1061. Orbital period 52.8 Earth years. Radius 74,333 kilometers. Day length 10.5 Earth hours. Eden Prime. This idyllic Aguarian world has one of the first human colonies established beyond the Charon Mass Relay. Eden Prime's biosphere is unusually well suited for importation of Earth native life. This fertility drew heavy immigration and development by the Systems Alliance and various corporations. Today, Eden Prime is a model of sustainable, organized development. The population is housed in space-efficient arcologies that tower over thousands of kilometers of green fields and orchards. Colony founded 2152. Population 3.7 million. Capital constant. Orbital period 2.5 Earth years. Radius 7,026 kilometers. Day length 64.1 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure 1.45 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature 23 Celsius. Surface gravity 1.04 G. Arcadia. An unusually large terrestrial world, Arcadia has a dense atmosphere composed of nitrogen and helium. Its scorching hot surface is mainly composed of alkaline basalts, but metal deposits are plentiful. Though several spectacular examples of columnar basalt formation offer scenic beauty, Arcadia's hostile environment has precluded commercial development. Orbital period 0.6 Earth years. Radius 10,893 kilometers. Day length 25.6 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure 16.17 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 358 Celsius, surface gravity 5.0 G. Nirvana. Nirvana has a trace atmosphere of xenon and krypton. The surface is a mix of water ice and iron oxides, with, cryo with cryovolcanic plumes of potassium concentrated around the equatorial ridge. Nirvana has little of commercial or scientific interest, though a few geological research stations were constructed in the early 2160s, all have been shut down for years. The Alliance maintains an automated ice cracking station, which has quietly stockpiled a large amount of, deut of deuterium fuel for use by the fleet. Orbital period 129.9 Earth years, radius 3,212 kilometers, day length 63.9 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.02 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 203 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.2 G. And Xanadu. 
Xanadu's atmosphere is composed of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of potassium with deposits of calcium. Its location in the deep cold of the outer system and its lack of any valuable resources leave little to recommend it. Orbital period, 1,029.9 Earth years. Radius, 3,730 kilometers. Day length, 69.8 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.19 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 216 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.3 G. There we go, and nothing down here. Good stuff. Alrighty then. Now I'm thinking, let's go grab Rex's family armor. Okay, ooh. We have two. And um, let's go for the family armor first. Hmm. Ooh. Let's see. Anything hidden? Anything at all? It would be appreciated. Carbonaceous Asteroid. This asteroid is emitting a weak, intermittent signal at a frequency of 1,540 megahertz. Radius 71 kilometers. Prothean data disk recovered. During a scan of the Phoenix System asteroid field, you detected an odd energy reading that Tally determined was quarian in nature. She led a recon team into the asteroid field where she discovered an abandoned freighter. The team could not determine why the ship was there, but they did find a Prothean data disk on board. Lovely. Thank you kindly. Okay, and nothing else. Vebinok. Vebinok is a small terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of carbonaceous material, water ice, and low-density silicates. Rare but concentrated loads of light metals have been deposited by asteroid impacts. One hemisphere of Vebinok is covered by surface deposits of oxidized copper. Approximately 270 years ago, a Turian bulk gas transport was attacked by pirates in the Phoenix system. Damaged, it made a rough landing on Vebinok. The heat of the landing metaled significant, oh, melted significant quantities of surface ice and ruptured shipping containers, spilling locks across the surface. Before this evaporated and escaped Vebinok's weak gravity, it reacted to cause the widespread rust. Orbital period, 94.5 Earth years. Radius, 3,379 kilometers. Day length, 68.3 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.27 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 154 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.28 G. Light metal surveyed. Scans from orbit have detected a deposit of cobalt. Lovely. And you? Sisalto, perhaps? Sisalto is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. It has no remarkable features. Orbital period 36.0 Earth years. Radius 56,621 kilometers. Day length 13.6 Earth hours. And you? Patashi. Patashi is a sun-blasted terrestrial world whose atmosphere was blasted away millennia ago by the star Phoenix. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of iron with deposits of tin. Due to its relatively low density, Patashi is tidally locked to Phoenix. Seas of molten light metal of oh excuse me, seas of molten light metals cover much of the sunward surface. I again I'm so sorry. I am so sorry for the number of tongue fumbles. I'm, I'm getting annoyed with myself, quite frankly. I'm getting very annoyed with myself. God, I'm running out of water. I'm running out of water, why? Okay, let's try that again. 
Due to its relatively low density, Patashi is tidally locked to Phoenix. Seas of molten light metals cover much of the sunward side. Orbital period, 0.3 Earth years. Radius, 7,082 kilometers. Day length, 0.3 Earth years. Atmospheric pressure, 0.00 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 546 Celsius. Holy shit. Surface gravity, 0.75 G. Rare elements surveyed. While scanning this planet, you detected a deposit of Samarium. Lovely. And I am going to bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we go and grab Rex's family armor. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.